Uh, first off, I just have a ton of respect for Julio and all the amazing things that he's accomplished in his career um, and for the team. And, you know, just thankful for the interactions I had uh, with Julio. He was a great teammate, you know, and a great role model in the uh, locker room. And then as it relates to the old line, we have a great group of guys. It's really, really fun coming into work every single day with everyone. We have a common goal, trying to get better to be the best unit that we can be. Um, and we're taking pride in what we're doing. And, um, you know, Coach Ledford has a, a standard of which what we need to do every single day. And, you know, we're living up to that and trying to work as hard as we can um, individually and then as a unit so we can help the team. Uh, yeah, and Coach D led um, is talked about people being multiple. Coach Ledford, not <laughs> Could you move to left if they wanted to? You coach said they're going to play the best five wherever they can, you know, put them. Yeah, I'll do anything to help the team. And, you know, that's that's what I'm trying to do now in this OTA season and then um, into training camp. So anything that the team asks for me, I'll, I'll give my best doing it. All right, thanks, Chris. Thank you. Jeff Schultz? Chris, how much do you know about um, Coach Schmidt's offense, uh, his creativity, and what he likes to do with offensive linemen? Uh, I can just speak of, like, you know, the, the experiences we had and, you know, what he expects from us as a, as a line. You know, we're trying to take the ball every play, uh, come off the ball flying, and, you know, be assignment sound. And we're trying to master that role right now within the team and finishing – uh, every single thing that we do so we can have a great unit. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to watch any tape from Tennessee Tennessee games at all to see what he does or if they've asked you to do it, but if so, what are your impressions uh, of that? And um, just in general, moving forward without, you know, moving forward without Julio in terms of your confidence in the offense. Yeah, I've seen, uh, you know, we have cut-ups of, uh, that, that I've watched of, of their clips from last year. And, you know, I just, anytime I'm watching, you know, film, I love watching uh, the other guards and see how they play and, you know, see how, how they get things done. And so it's been, it's been cool to watch. Um, and then there's, you know, tremendous confidence in, in myself and then within our teammates to have the best product we can on the field this year. Um, and, you know, we're just coming to work every single day trying to get better. And I think the connection piece as a team is really growing. And it's something I'm, you know, thankful for now that we're able to, you know, interact, be in the building. Um, it, it, it's fun and it's great to kind of get back to that team, team atmosphere that, you know, COVID kind of took away from. Michael Rothstein? Yeah, Chris, is there is there one kind of nuance maybe that's different that you have to learn in this offense? I would, I'd just say the, you know, the wording and language is different every time, you know, with different coaching staff. And so uh, that's the biggest transition is, you know, relearning language and, you know, a couple of things might mean the same, um, but you're just relearning the language and that's, that's a great opportunity with OTAs is to build that connection with each other as a line. So just for example, like Hennessy and myself working together, we're able to work through the language of different fronts and, you know, how to idea, how to work through it. And it's, it, it's really good and really valuable right now. And for you, what, what's obviously, you know, the whole country, the whole world is, you know, coming out of a global pandemic. What's maybe one thing that you've learned about yourself over the past year that is going to stick with you? I think it's the resilience and you look at the resilience of the, you know, the, fr the frontline workers, the first responders, all the things they had to do. Um, you know, very grateful for all the people behind the scenes that gave us the opportunity to play on Sunday. You know, we have the great staff that gives us our COVID tests. Those people here, 4:35 in the morning every day just to give us an opportunity to play on Sunday, and I think that really, you know, was highlighted all the great work that men and women do um, in our society, and I think that I'll be ever forever grateful um, for that. And then just really how fragile, um, you know, life can be, and 
uh, overcoming adversity as a society and, you know, everybody in their own personal family and stuff. So that's something that, at least personally, I took away from it. Thanks. Appreciate it. Charles Odo? Chris, this was uh, before your time here, but uh, the last time the, the Falcons uh, uh, lost a long-time starter at center, it was a very disruptive uh, thing for a number of years to, to, to find somebody to, to, to stay in that spot. What's your level of confidence in, in the candidates at, at center, and, and what can you do as a guard to, to help this transition? Uh, I mean, I have the ultimate confidence in these guys, and that's why we're in here every single day working as hard as we can and we're putting in extra all the time um we're working we're fitting our combinations you know there's talking through it how what do we want it to look like how are we going to accomplish it and then going out and doing it and doing the repetition of it and then keeping the standard of which uh we want and holding ourselves to that and that's really what we're trying you know at least as a group to accomplish and working with every one of those guys you know as a teammate all, you know, all I can ask for is that somebody's given their all and, you know, mentally, physically. And, you know, when you're doing that day in and day out with each other, you know, there's a love and appreciation for each other um, on and off the field. And that's what we're growing right now. How did you uh, see uh, Matt Hennessy um, grow through his rookie season? And and, and uh, how difficult is it for a first year guy to, to, to make a contribution at that position? Uh, ex extremely hard. You know, we had, you know, what he was able to do last year was outstanding. You know, we had the, the COVID, so he couldn't, or we couldn't, you know, meet and do these OTAs right now. So that's, you know, a disadvantage. You know, we do it virtually for the first time. Um, and then you go in, you go right into camp. He's thrown in there in that camp and did a, did a great job. And then, you know, had his role as the, as the, as the season played out, but you know you have to respect somebody that comes in every and every day, day in day out, rookie year, unconventional rookie year. Guys, you know you're trying to help everybody work through that experience, but no one else really had that experience of it wasn't a traditional off season. So what him and the entire rookie class was able to do, I think was uh, was great. Scott Bear, um, I'm just curious that given that your given that your uh, head coach also played guard does that change the dynamic of how you guys interact given that he know that, that he's been exactly where you are um does that kind of bond you guys closer like how does that change the the interactions that that uh, you guys have given his experience at your position for sure for sure uh you know we're always grateful to have an offensive lineman um as a head coach, I had one in college too, and was was always grateful. You know, Coach Smith really, you know, thinks in the mindset of an offensive lineman. He means what he says, and as a player, you you can't you can't uh, expect anything else than that. And um, you know, he he's been outstanding. We I love playing for him. I know the group does, and we're just really really excited to attack this year and get after this year. How did you? Uh get after your 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 downtime and your personal um, off season was there anything that you work on technically or getting in better shape or doing anything different uh, this year as a, as opposed to any others uh, I try to do a uh, body recomposition um, so just you know maintaining my weight dropping fat uh, gaining muscle and so that was my big thing this off season of what I want to do uh, physically and then uh, as it relates mentally, you know, I kind of I took two weeks off at the end of last year and then got right into it. I got into a great routine, you know, very fortunate of it. Uh, found it, you know, kind of worked through it last year. And having great role models in the league and the programs that the Falcons have put us through, you know, stressed the importance of, you know, finding a routine. And I think I was really able to hit my stride uh, this offseason and finding a routine to better myself. So I feel really good and really good going in through these OTAs so far. Kelly Price? Hey, I was just wondering, you know, through this whole Julio thing, I was just wondering, as you guys are trying to, you know, get used to this new coaching staff, really get um, focused on the guys that are there, what was it like to kind of see a now former teammate go through that? And now is it as easy as just, all right, we're moving on to, you know, the next thing in our OTAs here? Um, again, like, it's... You know, you see everything through social media, and that's just kind of how the world today is. And 
I try not to wrap myself and get involved with it because usually nothing really um, productive comes from it. But, you know, as a, as a teammate and as someone in the building, you know, you just keep your head down, um, keep working every day and then be as supportive as you can. And so that's uh, what I try to do. And, you know, you see different things, you hear different things. And then as a player, you really, you know, besides being supportive to your teammate, you kind of really try and tune the, the outside noise out because it really is just a distraction um, to, to what you're trying to accomplish. So I try to keep everything out. Scott, hey, go I'm sorry, Kelly, go ahead. My I was fault. just going to kind of follow up. Scott was asking about, you know, having a former lineman as your coach now. Um, yeah. What are some things that maybe we don't see in the media or fans don't see? Because he's very, you know, short um, to the point. Everyone seems like he's, you know, very, you know, down to business kind of guy. Have you seen any hints of his personality that you could share with us? Uh, you know, coach, coach is like that, too. And it's something you, you like and love about his personality. Um, but, you know, it's always fun. You see him smile when he comes over to to O-line Indy, you know, he has a little pride in it and he, he enjoys it. And so as a group, you know, when you have the head coach come down to, to your individual, um, it's always kind of fun. There's a good juice to it. And so it's a nice, it's a nice thing in practice. Do you like anything else? Yeah, Chris, um, when my battery runs out, uh, what's going to be the key to getting the running game going for you guys? Uh, being assignment sound and, you know, coming off the ball. And that's the, that's the, the biggest thing is uh, when we're assignment sound and do what the coaching staff asks for us, that's, that's all we can do. And being uh, assignment sound, coming off the ball as fast as we can and being physical, trying to finish, finish everything. And so when you take pride in what you do and, you know, as offensive lineman, we need to take pride in protecting the quarterback and running the football. And so that's what we're, we're growing and doing right now um, this off season to, to be the best we can be come August. Thank you. Jeff Schultz, anything else? Yeah, Chris, I agree. Nothing good comes from social media. Um, <laughs> you, uh, you played obviously football a long time. You played in different offenses. I'm just curious, how hard is it to adjust to a new scheme? You know, where did, how long should of a transition should people expect? Um, you know, for myself, and, and again, I, I take this back to the great role models that I've had from Alex to Jake to, to previous coaches, is you, you have a bank of knowledge, right? And you try and always store every, every experience every day you're adding to that bank or your toolbox, whatever way uh, people want to explain it. And so when, when, you, when you keep adding and building your knowledge of football every single day, um, that's all I try to do. And then when you have you know, the, a change like this with a new offense, um, at least for myself, what I try to do is correlate how much of what I know is the same. And then it's usually, you know, changing language. And so, like, like I said earlier, when, when you are able to change the language over in your head, now you, you have a bigger foundation, like you, you could say a better foundation of knowledge to grow. So the, it's getting quicker and easier now the older I am in the league compared to, you know, my rookie year coming in, not knowing as much as to now in year three, being able to learn and grow. Michael Rossi, anything else? I'm good. Thank you, Chris. Charles, any follow-ups? You, uh, when you were talking about Julio uh, early, you, you mentioned not, you know, his, his role as a great teammate and, and leader. And um, I'm just wondering from your perspective, um, do you see anybody who's a natural fit to help fill that void? Uh, for sure. The whole, the whole receiver group, those guys come in with a great attitude every day. They're fun to be around in the locker room. And I know they have uh, huge accountability in what they do. So, you know, as we continue to grow throughout the year, you know, things are going to shake out the way they do. But, you know, as teammates, we have a great, great group of guys. who are going to grow and we're going to, you know, just grow as a team, and Julio's a amazing player, amazing teammate, and you know I'll I'll miss him, but you know we got to grow and move on as a team, and we have great guys in our locker room. Scott, any follow-ups? Um, yeah, and Chris, you'll you'll probably know more once you get the pads on this summer. But what are your early takeaways for how for what it's going to be like to block for somebody like um, Mike? 
and 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 how how his rushing style is going to fit into this uh, scheme and and uh, what you guys are trying to do. You know those guys those guys are great every day they're working again to get better and so now I I I think with everyone I just try to speak to you know myself and as the offensive line but I think everybody right now is trying to learn what is the coaching staff asking from us. And then how do we do it the best of our ability and lay that out and then get in the routine of that. Um, but it's, it's fun right now. Grateful to be in here. Every guy working to, to their best right now. And it's, it's a fun environment to come out and practice. And I'm glad we're doing it. Time for one more, Kelly. Yeah. You just mentioned that, you know, you like coming out to practice. What's the uh, biggest difference from, I guess this time, maybe not last year, but with the last coaching staff versus this one, what are some changes that you just really like about this new coaching staff? Um, I think, you know, I, I love the previous staff as well. They, you know, gave me, you know, the opportunity of a lifetime, which I'll be forever grateful for. Um, but this, you know, the staff, it's fun to come in, come to work every day. You know, we have a great group of offensive linemen. And it's, you know, it's really fun to come in. We have a plan, you know, we have a, what we're doing an individual, come in, attack it, and then, you know, be an assignment sound and team. And it's just, it's fun right now. It's fun learning. And it's cool to just experience football, you know, again, and even this, the simplest form of OTAs is, is, is just amazing and grateful to be here with, with these guys and love the staff. And, you keep growing the relationships every day. So it's not only, you know, building trust with the players and the staff. And so we keep building that connection, you know, player to coach, coach to player, player to player. Um, and that's, that's what the focus is, at least for me. And I, I love it.